Hello everyone and welcome to Falcon Heavy Booster Recovery with KOS and Kerbal Space Program. This is KSP with the Realism Overhaul set of mods and so there are additional complications to trying to recover the boosters that you won't see in stock. First of all, right at the start you saw that it took some time for the engines to ignite and that causes complications especially when you're trying to land when there's only a few seconds between you and the ground and you have to account for the fact that the engines need to spool up. You'll note that I did light the boosters first and then light the core as they did on the Falcon Heavy launch. While in terms of fuel load and general parameters, all the engine stats and everything like that, this should be very close to the real Falcon Heavy. There are differences and we will soon see one of those differences here. I had to put Separatrons on. I don't have the hydraulic system that they have in order to push the boosters out. There's just no such thing. So there are uh, little Separatrons and here you see me activating the script for each of the boosters. Uh, you cannot activate uh, KOS script on the same, uh, two KOS scripts on the same vessel. So I had to wait for them to separate before activating them. There might be an in-script way of activating that, but I'm not sure. So here we go, igniting, and they're turning around. And this was remarkable that they uh, kept so close together and th that it worked at all. Uh, they do keep within render range for the most part during the flight back. There is obviously a slight discrepancy between the two because I could only activate one script at a time so one booster got a head start on the script. I did wait until they had turned around so that their flames wouldn't be pointed at each other before igniting the boosters. It should be noted that I'm doing this in KSP 1.1.3 in 1.2.2, the separation worked completely differently with the same craft, with the same separatrons and everything, and the two boosters went further away from each other by about two kilometers, and it was very inaccurate. But on the other hand, in 1.2.2, it didn't have the wiggliness that you're going to see uh, as we approach the ground here. The, the boosters tend to get a little bit wobbly. And that's a 1.1.3 thing that doesn't happen in 1.2.2, so it's it's very complicated. Um, yeah, there are a lot of curious things when it comes to controlling stuff with KOS between the two versions. Here we are on final touchdown, and uh, spoiler alert, it's not going to work out this time. I expected that some of you might want to see some explosions, and so uh, this is just a little bit off and topple and not quite a full explosion but an explosion of sort of the important parts but the other booster did not topple well until I turned to it uh, and when I turned to it it uh, decided to completely explode so not much of a success there we do have to be able to turn to the boosters um, these legs are admittedly a little bit glitchy so that's the problem. Okay, so here I try again. I don't want to belabor the launches, and uh, even though there were many, many more tries than I'll show in this video, I just wanted to give a sense of some of the, the attempts involved. It does give me some time to address a few things. First of all, I don't use pure nitrogen cold gas thrusters. I had to use hydrazine, and so we do use hydrazine thrusters on the boosters to help orient them. It might not be necessary, honestly, because they're so bad at orienting anyway on the thrusters. They, they're pretty bad at orienting until they get a grip of the atmosphere. Uh, right here is fine when they're separating, and then as long as the engines are lit, that's fine because the engine gimbling is much more capable of uh, pointing them in the right direction. But uh, with the little thrusters, it's really bad. So uh, I tried to improve on that by using the hydrazine thrusters, but yeah, m maybe just using really big nitrogen thrusters would do the trick too, but it's very inefficient. Uh, here we have the retro burn again. I have to point out that the way I do my KOS scripts is the wrong way. Um, or a wrong way. There's an infinite number of wrong ways you can do things. And so uh, th there is a good way of writing these KOS scripts and uh, there's my way of doing it. I, I wouldn't recommend copying my way because uh, it involves a lot of trial and error as you can see. Um, those who do it the right way probably have a much better success rate and they can probably land it directly on a nice little pad and it's very impressive and everything. But I I'm doing it my way and uh, it's got to be a little bit more complicated and involve a lot more launches and explosions. But 
you know, uh, some people have fun with this sort of thing. This is the launch that actually worked, and so my tweaking finally paid off. It worked as far as actually getting the boosters to land. Uh, obviously, they're not landing on little pads yet. We'll have to work on that. But um, there are a few other complications to doing this in realism overhaul compared to stock. The engines don't throttle all the way. These have realistic throttle ranges. They don't go all the way down to zero. So you have to account for that when you're telling the engines how to throttle uh, when they're touching down. Another thing that makes it easier for stock players to do the same sort of thing is reaction wheels. We, we don't have those to any significant extent. I don't believe there are any here. I think I chose the grid fins that did not include reaction wheels. The standard uh, KK launchers uh, grid fins did have reaction wheels in, but these are the ones from the Kerbal Reusability expansion, and I think they don't, if I recall correctly. Uh, that I removed them. Anyway, so that's an additional complication. And also this Vermeer space, which uh, for reasons I'm not entirely sure about, loves to kill the center engine on these boosters. And actually the retro burn we do prior to landing uh, is mainly to save that center engine. Uh, I know SpaceX actually does that retro burn to slow down, but um, we actually have to do it exactly the way that I have it do it. Otherwise the center engine will explode from stresses due to Vermeer space, aerodynamic stresses. So that's interesting. Uh, yep. So here uh, we're going to start the retro burn at uh, 40 kilometers. And it continues to retro burn at that throttle level. You'll note it's not a full throttle burn uh, until 15 kilometers. And that's specifically to save that center engine. And uh, we do that with two engines here. The, the main boost back burn we do with three engines. The final burn, the touchdown burn, is just a single engine, and there are limited ignitions to these engines, and that's why we're only using two here instead of three, because I think I'm limited to four ignitions on these engines, so uh, it was just what had to be. As far as what went wrong with the initial attempts and what I needed to tweak in order to get this right, uh, it was really just two numbers. Uh, one number was the compensation for the throttle level, uh, it has to throttle lower than it normally would because the bottom of the throttle range is not zero, it's actually about 25% or so. And so there, there is a number to compensate for that that I had to tweak. And also I had to tweak the delay uh, to indicate how long ahead of where it would normally retro burn it should start in order to compensate for the engine ignition time. And so there we have it. I finally got right, and they are both standing upright. Uh, but those landing legs are a little bit wobbly, and actually they're still sort of walking it a little bit. There's a little bit of velocity over the surface that's preventing me from switching to the other booster right now. I'm actually trying to switch to the other booster, but I have to wait until that one stops moving. And this one almost to topples over as I switch to it, but it stays upright. So success! Um, it's not as perfect as you might have seen from stock players. I don't know if anybody else has done this in Realism Overhaul with the, the complications that we have, but maybe, uh, and I'm not doing it the best way possible, so I'm sure people have done it perfectly and I'm probably just wasting my time. Anyway, I'm satisfied that I brought my boosters back and uh, they're in good shape, so I can be happy with that. And on that note, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. And I'll see you next time.